So, um, as of right now, Star Trek has been around for 55 years, which is insane when you think about it, for something that got essentially cancelled after its original pilot, and then got to do a second pilot, so a co-pilot, I suppose. Um, I don't know, makes sense, I suppose. Uh, yeah, and in some form or another, Star Trek has been around for 55 years. Trouble is, some people, I don't know, it's like over those 55 years, it's it's changed a lot because it's had to. You know, times have changed, people have changed, and this is all very, very groovy because you don't change eh I mean you, know, you look at the uh, the whole next gen DS9 Voyager Enterprise era it was kind of the same all the way through and the franchise ended up nearly dying because of it and some people seem to be annoyed about the fact that it hasn't stayed the same. So, here's something I like to call The Trouble with Trekkies. Right, so, um, these, I mean, especially in like recent years, you hear it a lot that, um, Star Trek fans and you know I'm I'm not this isn't gonna be having a dig at Star Trek I'm not really having a dig at Star Trek fans because I'm kind of obsessed with Star Trek um, to the side of me there are like two shelves full of starships I have a picture of Scott Bakula just above Mahid I have well, I've Scott Bakula here as well um, from my trips to um, Star Trek conventions. Um, yeah, on the well, up with the uh, Bakula picture, a picture that's signed by most of the cast of Discovery because me, um, sci fi geek, Star Trek nerd. Yeah, it's the truth. So, yeah, um, yeah. So you, you have it a lot from fans that have been in Star Trek for potentially the whole of their lives, and it's things like you know, oh, Discovery isn't real Trek. Oh, Picard isn't really Trek. Well, it's it's got Star Trek in the name. It is real Trek. You might not like it, but it is real Trek. And that's one of those things that... Uh, it's like some of you don't get that it's all real Trek. I mean, in an ideal world, some of the stuff from the books and comics would be considered real Trek. But just going by what's in an episode or a film... It's all real Trek. And yeah, you know, maybe you don't like it. That's fine. I mean, okay, so, um, so original Star Trek, um, three seasons, nearly got cancelled after the second one. Fans showed their support by writing into the studio and saying, you know, don't cancel this, we actually quite like it a bit. And they're like, oh, okay then. And it carried on. Not so successful when they tried the same thing after season three, but yeah, no. Um, then it just picked up popularity once it went into syndication and pretty much any um, TV channel or network that, it's like, oh, we haven't got anything for like, 
five o'clock on a Thursday. Oh, that, that Star Trek thing's pretty cheap. Yeah, that'll do. Yeah, why not? I mean, at one point, I don't know if it's still the case now, but at one point in, it was in the 90s, apparently there was an episode of Star Trek being shown on telly somewhere in the world, like, every minute of the day. And because of that, it got more fans. And, you know, just channels being able to just pick it up because it was so cheap, because it was a failed TV show. And they just snapped it up because, eh, it's all right. It just, it, it, it fills the time slot. Then they got more and more popular through the like, 70s till it got a film. And then that film got sequels. Not entirely sure how, because motion picture is... The term dumpster fire gets thrown around a lot these days. Motion picture kind of embodies it. It's just... It's just so bad. I mean, the effects are amazing. But the story was just so bad. Some of the acting was just so bad. But, meh, it got given a sequel. Much smaller budget. And, you know, because of trying to get creative with the little budget they had, we got Wrath of Khan. And Wrath of Khan is kind of why I got into Star Trek. You know, I just, for some reason, never seen anything else. Just saw Wrath of Khan on telly one time. Watched it. That was amazing. The, the little ear worm things kind of freaked me out a bit as a kid but you know it didn't really register the whole that's very clearly a plastic ear that it's crawling into so yeah get older just appreciate it for being a masterpiece um and then more sequels and so good and then next generation When it first started, Next Generation was basically just, hey, that thing we did 20 years ago, let's, let's do that again, because that worked 20 years ago, so it'll work now. Not really how it works, but okay. Um, so yeah, the first, with a couple of exceptions, like Q Who, that's a really good episode of Next Gen early on. But apart from, like, two decent episodes, the first couple of seasons of Next Gen, even some of season three, is really bad. I mean, people hold up Next Generation as the peak of Star Trek. And, yeah, I suppose it probably is the most popular, at the, you know, well, at the time, anyway. Um, but, yeah, probably is most popular. However, first couple of seasons were basically just the original series on a new ship with new people. You know, just eight eased up. And that's fine, I suppose. Except you're basically copying styles and ideas from the 60s. And that's not going to work in the 80s. Until Next Generation developed its own personality, it was kind of terrible. I mean, even some of the acting, and you know, when you've got Sir Patrick Stewart there, you know, a legend, and even some of his scenes are a bit sort of, oh, okay, fair enough. That shows that something's going wrong somewhere. I think it's probably the writing. The fact that... I mean... Not to dump on the guy, but... Gene Roddenberry, you know... They're, you know, obviously creating Star Trek is a huge deal. The fact that there are things from Star Trek that have become... Like a, a set thing in sci-fi elsewhere... That's something to be proud of. You know, a lot of respect for the guy. 
just don't look into him outside of the creator of Star Trek thing. Yeah, he, you, you look him up as a person, and yeah, he's a bit of an ass, and just didn't want anyone other than himself or someone he'd handpicked to have any real control over Next Generation when it started up. So it was a bit stale. And it wasn't till you know, obviously as time went on, his health got worse and he stepped away from a lot of it. But he still had handpicked person there to sort of, oh, well, Gene wouldn't do it that way, so we're not doing it that way. And it wasn't till those people sort of moved away from it and new people took over and started doing what they wanted to do with Star Trek. Then Next Gen became good. And then by the end of it, it was bloody brilliant. And, you know, because of that, we've got things like Best of Both Worlds and, um, a bit, f you know, and the There Are Four Lights. Going on a bit further, we've got First Contact, which, again, kind of masterpiece. So, also, interesting little side note First Contact. Only time so far that anyone's actually said Star Trek in Star Trek. So, well done James Cromwell for that honour. Um, but, yeah. It wasn't until Next Gen stopped trying to copy the original series that it got good. And then DS9 tried, you know, did something different. People didn't particularly like it at the time. Um, nowadays it's gotten a hell of a resurgence and people are starting to realise actually DS9 is pretty bloody good. That's... Uh, we should have given that a bit more... a um, bit more time at the time. And, yeah, I mean, there's, there's even rumours of some sort of DS9 revival and CBS, please... Please, as long as it's you know, if get some of the old writers back if they're interested, please, that would be awesome. Especially if you do the uh, the what if episode from the What We Left Behind documentary, because. Hmm. Anyway, um, but yeah, so at the time, wasn't that popular. You know, it did all right, but it was different. So a lot of people, it's like, mm, it's not really Star Trek, is it? It's Star Wait and See What Comes to Us. So I suppose it was Star Trek, but from the alien point of view, you know, the aliens are trekking through the stars. They come across DS9. Ooh. That makes sense. Okay. Um, this led to Voyager, which was... Let's do the same thing we've done before. But mix it up a little bit. It did all right. Again, until you get to, like, end of season three, it's a few decent episodes, but... For the most part, kind of crap. Um, Enterprise, I, I, I worship Scott Bakula, so I was always gonna love that. But again, it's each series is different and moves on. And yeah, then we get to now, you know, the, the you know, the JJ films which may or may not be done at this point. We're not entirely sure. Um, you know, Kelvin Timeline was something new and brought Star Trek to an audience that maybe had never wanted to watch it because, eh, you know, like, oh, it's all about peaceful coexistence and exploration and all this stuff. And I'm, mm, I don't know. But yeah, but look, big explosions and lens flares. Okay, I'll give that a go. Yeah, why not? 
and there are people that saw the Kelvin films and then that made them want to see more Star Trek so they've gone back and watched the episodes and the other films and now there's new fans to keep it alive which as fans is what we want I mean you know Doctor Who in two years time will have been going for 60 years because the fans just give it their full support and Star Trek kind of needs you know, it needs that it needs to change so it appeals to new people so that people keep watching it because they're still making it and I, I don't see why this seems to be such a big issue for a lot of fans because we want them to keep making Star Trek surely <laughs> otherwise what's the point But people going out and saying, oh, Discovery's not Star Trek. Oh, Picard's not Star Trek. Oh, the Kelvin films. Oh, they're a different timeline. Eh. It's all Star Trek. And it needs to change with the times. Otherwise, right, if it hadn't changed, you know, think back to the original series, there was an episode where... I can't remember who but yeoman rand is walking through the corridor one of the male crew members walks past her and smacks her on the ass as she walks by and she's like oh you guys <laughs> you did that in picard or you know discovery you know if um like if saru came walking onto the bridge and like all right burnham smacked her across the ass Doug Jones would probably be sacked because of the outrage of the fans. He'd be probably chased down the street, but you know he's a very tall, gangly man, so he could probably outrun them all. And you know, fair enough, because um, he is like some sort of human spider or something. You know, just like, yeah, and uh, yeah, I. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to meet him again without picturing him scurrying across my front room or being trapped in my bath. That that sounded dodgier than it was meant to. If it was again, if it was Scott Bakula, then maybe he would be trapped in my bath. I, mm, that man confuses me. In so many ways. Hmm. Um, but yeah, you know, if you had an episode of Star Trek now where a female crew member got her ass slapped and there wasn't straight away her turning around, punching the guy and, you know, doing some sort of Klingon martial arts to take him down until he apologised, then that's it. You know, the outrage of fans, that would. You know, that series would probably get cancelled there and then. At the very least, the actor responsible would get sacked, even though it's in the script. And you have you have to change. Otherwise, it just... You know, it just gets bad. And as I say, you know, Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, Voyager, Enterprise... All written and produced and, you know, all made by the same people. And it got to a point where people were starting to get a bit bored because it was all the same. You know, they did different stuff sometimes, but for the most part it was all the same. And, yeah, I get you want to do what, you know, what's been proven in the past. Like, oh, you know, well, fans like such and such. So if we do that again, <laughs> but I mean, at the moment, WWE is having a similar thing where they're just doing the same thing all the time, and pretty much no one's watching them. And the few of us that do watch it, it's like, oh, do you want to watch Raw? Uh, I suppose we might as well. Yeah. 
we, we usually do on a Tuesday, so yeah, why not? And meh, it's just if something stays the same for too long, it's hard to stay a fan of it. It's just, you know, it's just that simple. Um, but yeah, okay, you know, if you watch Picard, you watch Discovery, you don't like it, that's fine. Don't like it. No one's going to force you to like it. But then don't criticise people that do like it. Because that makes you the bad guy. Just, you know, you like Next Generation. Fine, that's cool. Jump on Netflix. Take out your Blu-rays. Whatever. Watch it. You know, watch it. Love it. Just sit there going, oh my god, this is like the greatest series ever made. And that's fine. No one's going to stop you. I'm not going to stop you. I'm, you know, I mean, I prefer, like I said, I prefer DS9. But later next gens, there's some really good stuff in there. But it's fine. You know, you only like the original series. Okay. Watch that. Again, no one's going to stop you. You only like next gen and, you know, maybe kind of like DS9 and Voyager. That's fine. Watch them. If you're obsessed with Scott Bakula because him being in Quantum Leap was why you got into sci-fi as a kid and you would sell your soul to actually meet the guy. Even if it was just to walk up to him and go, I will see my dreams come alive at last. I will touch this guy. And then shake his hand. Because, yeah, I'm sure he's never heard that one before. Mm. Or, you know, meet him and just go, Oh boy. And and then have a panic attack as you're shaking his hand. Because, pretty certain, whatever happens, that's what's happening. But, you know, then, yeah, if it's, you know, blah, 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 Bacula, then watch Enterprise. You know, it's just, if you love something, then just do it, all right? If you, you know, you don't like Discovery, fine, okay, you know, series, series one wasn't that great. Season three was a bit all over the place. Season two is amazing shut your mouth um you don't like Picard fair enough it's I mean but again if you if you watched Picard episode by episode when it was first on go back rewatch it you know, just set a day aside binge the whole of season one of Picard because it works better in a block instead of being spread over months you watch it in one block it's a better series. It, trust me on this. It, it really is. I did it recently and enjoyed it so much more. And I quite liked it first time around. So, you know. Um, but yeah, just... If you don't if you don't like Picard, you don't like Discovery, don't watch it. And if enough people that are like, oh, it's not really track. Oh, I hate Picard. I hate Discovery. If enough people that hate it don't watch it. They will stop making it. That's kind of how it works. That's how it happened with the original series. That people stopped watching it for whatever reason. And like, oh, there's not enough people watching it for it to be worth carrying on making. So, off we go. <laughs> and again, that's what will happen. If you don't like it, don't watch it. No one is making you watch it. Just... As I say, just watch your Blu-rays of the original series and Next Gen and the films and DS9 and Voyager. Oh, um. Yeah, okay. Maybe not those last two. But, you know, just watch your Blu-rays, watch your DVDs, watch it on Netflix. Well, you know, just watch the ones that you like. But then if someone else says, oh, I really like, you know, sort of, yeah, I love Star Trek. You know, I really like Discovery. 
just shush and just go oh cool yeah I'm not really a fan of it myself oh, oh fair enough you yeah, know it's not to everyone's liking and then you move on not complicated if you like a certain thing like it like the hell out of that thing but as I say don't hassle people that do like it because you know especially if it's a younger Star Trek fan that maybe got into it because Discovery was all shiny and sparkly and they just thought ooh and then watched it from that they might then go back and watch Next Gen and Voyager and you know they might end up loving the entire franchise because they haven't had someone make them feel bad for liking Discovery and you know the whole point of Star Trek is everyone getting on and everyone working towards you know everyone having similar beliefs and motivations and as a fandom that's what we are Star Trek fans are a federation the United Federation of fans not as catchy but you get the point leave me alone and that's that's what we need we need all Star Trek fans just be I mean we've got enough people from other fandoms giving us crap for just liking it you know oh it's not as good as Star Wars uh -huh. <laughs> you know, right I don't understand how you can compare them just because they've both got star in the title but okay that's you yeah you, know, you, you do you um just you know how you know yeah, look at the Star Trek films. Ruffle Khan's really good. Search for Spock's pretty good. Voyage Home. Undiscovered Country. First Contact. So, um, and personally, I quite like all three of the JJ films. Not to everyone's liking, but you know. So, of. Ooh, 12? 12 Star Trek films? 13? And you got like 6 or 7 good ones. Star Wars films. Prequels. Go away. I mean, when Revenge of the Sith is the best of your trilogy. Mm. The original trilogy. Again, it's pretty much just Empire. Sequel trilogy. I'm I'm not even touching that one. Just you know, you say you like any part of the sequel trilogy and you're taking life in your hands. So there's one, maybe two decent Star Wars films, like really good. And I like Star Wars. And if but you know, if you're gonna compare the two, which I don't think you should then, you know, go and buy the numbers. <laughs> it's like, yeah, but uh, off topic, but fine. So we've got enough people from other fandoms, you know, like Star Wars people saying that Star Wars is better than Star Trek, even though you can't compare them because they're nothing alike. That's like saying that you prefer Stargate, which is probably slightly closer to Star Trek. But it's still very, very different. You know, I mean, the only, the only thing you can really have a war with, really, is Babylon 5. Because, depending on who you listen to, that was possibly originally pitched as a uh, Star Trek series and then got reworked into DS9. But... Yeah, if, I don't know. who knows if there's any truth to that or not? Because um, obviously both sides of the fence you can have people 
like confirming and denying it. So whatever. But Babylon Five is closer to Star Trek than Star Wars or anything else. It's got Star in the title. Yeah, that's like yeah. Oh, you like Star Wars? Oh, I prefer Starman by David Bowie. Mm. I'm pushed up. Nerdy glasses, but yeah, they're just, just in case you wondered. Oh, he's still there. Okay. Um, which, you know, well done, by the way. I wasn't expecting this to go on this long. So, um, but yeah, we've got enough fans of other fandoms just attacking us. You know, Star Trek fans shouldn't be attacking each other. They, if, you know, you uh, Destination or, you know, on the Star Trek cruise or anything like that, and someone's like, oh my God, it's so-and-so from Discovery. Yeah. Yeah. Who? I, yeah. Don't really like Discovery. Just go, oh, he plays the Doctor. Or, you know, he's, he's the engineer or, you know, whatever. And you go, oh, okay, cool. Okay. Hey, John Delancey! And, and, you know, just go stalk them. That's fine. But, hey, Star Trek fans need to be a united federation of people. And just... If you don't like it, don't watch it. It's that simple. And I've already said it, but you don't like it, you don't watch it. Enough people don't watch it, it don't get made anymore. But, yeah. I don't expect that to happen, but we can hope, you know. It's what Star Trek's all about. Hope for the future. But not the Paul McCartney song from Destiny. But, although, that is pretty awesome. If that was the theme music to Enterprise, people would like it a lot more. But I'm, I'm not getting into Faith of the Heart. I am not, I'm not brave enough to touch that one. Or am I? Hmm. That's, that's probably another um, overly long video on its own. But, yeah. Um, so, yeah, just like what you like. Let other people like what they like. And the world will be a better place. And, uh, yeah. That is the trouble with Trekkies. Uh, I, I hope you've at least paid attention to some of what I said um, it's probably kind of difficult at times but you know if, if you did manage it then good on you well done um, you, know, you get your reward in heaven and all that but um, yeah um, thanks for watching I hope you did because otherwise I've been talking to myself more than usual but yeah thanks for watching hopefully you liked it enough to subscribe because that'd be cool and yeah I will hopefully see you next time if I don't I'm sorry I wasn't good enough but 